Welcome to my talk show, Raising Greatness, where I interview guests to find out the path to success. I'm your host, Nicholas Buama. For Women's History Month, I want to celebrate a phenomenal woman. She's the CEO of Philandro Castile Rungi Foundation. She's also Philandro Castile's mother. Please welcome Ms. Valerie Castile. Uh, nice for you to have me here, uh, Nicholas. Thank you for letting me interview you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, your son's name was Philando Castile. So everything I read about him, he seemed to be a pretty awesome person. Can you tell us more about um, your son? How, how was he when he was my age? Was he bad? Was he good? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Philando, um, he was a wonderful young man, uh, very mannerable. Um, he uh, did what he was told to do. You know, he was very respectful of his elders and uh, he never caused me any problems. I never had to go to the schools to defend him or his behavior. Uh, when I'd go to what they then called PTA meetings, he uh, always was on point with his learning and uh, they always had good things to say about him, how uh, he always did his work and, you know, just was an all around good kid. And when he was your age, nine and 10, um, at that time, they had, the, I think, the Sega Genesis game out. Uh, you wouldn't be familiar with that because that was back in, like, the uh, early 90s. But uh, the gaming system that they had then was uh, uh, the Sega Genesis, you know, because he was such a, uh, a nice young man and, and, you know, did his chores and everything. He got an allowance. And... Um, my thing with him was whatever you wanted, I can meet you halfway. So if you take half of your allowance money, then we can go buy this game. So he was just an all around good kid and he played his game and he went to school every day and uh, he never had a fight in school. He just was uh, a nice kid, mannerable, respectable as yourself, you know, but uh, yeah, he was a really good, great kid. Well, he sounds, he sounds like a, uh, he was an awesome kid uh, growing up. The sec my second question is, uh, did Philandro have any siblings? Like how many siblings did he have? Well, you know, uh, me personally, his mother, I uh, had him and, and uh, my daughter that just left out of here, Alizé, uh, she's a uh, 28. Orlando would be turning 28, I mean, 38, they're 10 years apart. I had him, you know, alone. He was the only child for 10 years because uh, that's the way God wanted it. And we had a very, very special relationship, a great bond, similar to you and your mom. You know, you're the only kid, you're the, you're the man. And uh, you know what I'm talking about, that special relationship you got with your mama. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He um, he loved uh Valley Fair. You familiar with Valley Fair or uh, Six Flags or uh, one of those kind of places, Disney World, where they have the rides and and, and water and and all this here kind of stuff. He loved that place. That's where he went uh, every birthday. <laughs> every every birthday. Like every single one when he was younger. Yeah everyone once he got of age they, and he was tall enough to get on those roller coasters and things, that kind of stuff um that's all he wanted you know to get a group of his friends together and uh we go to valley fair for his birthday every year that's all he wanted he didn't want nothing else he just wanted to go have some fun ride those huge scary roller coasters yes yes he loved those things 
He loved those things. But yeah, that's all he wanted to do for his birthday is go to Valley's Fair. I and like like I like roller coasters. But I I I I'm too scared to go on like a super big one because that's way too scary. Yeah, he loved those things. He clammed those steps to go up there or however they got on there. But yeah, he he loved those things. I wouldn't dare get on them. Me either. I didn't like him either. So he had to be tall enough to get on there himself, by himself. You know, I wasn't doing it. <laughs> I, I always just visualize the thing going down and then just keep on going. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, no, nah, it's just my luck. No, nah, I don't think so. But uh, he was just a happy-go-lucky child. And, and I, I, I just uh, thank God all the time for giving me those 32 years. I thank him all the time for giving me that. So yeah, uh, it's just a waste of a good man. So yeah. And I see that he really loved roller coasters, but um, you said that he had siblings. So did they like fight a lot? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Uh no. Okay, what I was saying to you was, uh, I have two children, but his father had uh four children as well. But these two, the two, my two, they fight, you know what I'm saying? But they'd make up, you know, they, they'd they had their little disagreement and, and, and it was always this thing like, okay, mom, <laughs> mom, get your daughter or mom, get your son. And I'm looking at them. I'm like, both y'all, my kids, what are y'all talking about? Well, he bothered me. Or oh, she bothered me. Mom, get your son. Get your daughter. I'm like, these kids are crazy. <laughs> but they had a, a, a very loving relationship, you know. Okay. Uh, we That's just... funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so uh he your son, he worked at a school with um a lot of children, and I heard that they loved him there. So um, you have your own foundation, and uh, what are you doing with that to help him? Uh, the foundation uh, was uh, designed around the things that he held near and dear to his heart, and that was uh, family, community, and the children that he served. Uh, Philando found his niche in life, and... Uh, started working for the uh, St. Paul Public School. I think he probably was like 19 then because he started working when he was 13 and he found his niche when he was 19 and he started working in the school and uh, he worked his way up to become the supervisor. So um, he knew all the children by name. Uh, he knew all of their allergies. You know, you have some very bad allergies out here that will kill you. So he he felt that it was important that he learned everything that he needed to know about supervising that kitchen so that he could take care of the children. And um, he would pay for the children's lunches out of his own pocket when they forget to bring their money or whatever, but he would pay for their lunches as well. That's a great and, uh, Yeah. Yeah, great guy, great guy. He was a, a mentor and a role model. A uh, young guy told me a story about him, how uh, he helped him make friends at school. He was new to the school and uh, he had got his lunch and all the other boys were sitting at one table and he took his tray and sat by himself. And Philando came over and talked to him for a minute and picked up his tray and said, you need to come over here and sit with these guys, you know? So he, Philando introduced him to all the boys and uh, they became friends. And uh, Philando helped him make his first friend at school. And uh, yeah, uh, just an awesome guy. And uh, I thought that was great. Uh, I hear a lot of stories about him from the children that I, I didn't know. And it, it just warms my heart to uh, hear some of these stories about how kind and, and generous he was of a person. But uh, the foundation carries that on. Uh, 
We have families that lose the loved one to gun violence. We have um, paid down the negative lunch balances at you know the school systems here in Minnesota. We partner with other uh, organizations and foundations in support of them as well. We've you know we 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 do a lot. Um, right now, we're working on getting uh, as many families uh, hotspots and internet service as we can because our kids are struggling right now with the distance learning. So we're we're hopeful that we can receive a, this grant to get them uh, internet service because you know you guys are the leaders of the future leaders of this country. So we have to take care of you in whatever shape or form that is. We have to take care of you guys because at some point you all are gonna leave this country. And I'm gonna jump ahead of you and I'm gonna answer uh, some of these questions. You know, I, I feel like uh, your video is, is, is very, very strong and empowering for the kids because Everything that they're doing in that video and, and uh, what they're representing as far as uh, job wise, you know, you on the clock. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, um, to be that, that, that nurse, that doctor, that senator, that representative, that police officer, you know, that uh, medic, that person that's in the army, we need you guys to be all of that and be the best at it and, and have sympathy and morality and all those good characteristics that makes you who you are. And yeah, uh, I think it's a great video and I support your video and I would definitely share it with others and uh, you're just such an awesome kid and you're gonna go do great things. You know, you keep empowering uh, our younger generations to be the best that they can be and that you can do that. You can. And uh, yeah, it, it's great talking with you and, and you know, uh, I just love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how can Black youth such as myself help to make this a better world, especially for the Black community? Uh, you know, like I said, uh, empowering one another is one of the biggest things. Uh, educating one another is, is another thing. Uh, being active, uh, reaching out to some of the organizations and, and see where you fit in and where you can uh, best serve your community. Uh, go to some of the meetings which which parents and and listen in. You know you might hear something that may uh, activate you. You know everybody's not activated. You know some people and, and children. You know uh, they're not thinking about they're thinking about uh, playing a game or you know I mean kids. Uh, out there being children. So some children are a little bit more advanced than others and they can project things and see things uh, differently than other children. So it's good to just uh, activate one another and uh, uh, go to some things with your parents and, and uh, listen in and just observe things. And then it, it'll probably something to land in your head and you say, you know what? I think I want to do that. I think I can serve better doing this. So yeah, I think uh, what you're doing is great. And, and I know you're a great influencer. So you can do your influencing as well. Um, yeah, so uh, how do you how do you want your son to be remembered? I want him to be remembered uh, as Mr. Phil, the caring supervisor of uh, J.J. Hill Monastery 
elementary school. But yeah, I want him to be remembered as this great, wonderful person that cared about everybody. I would like for uh, Philando to be remembered as the caring, loving uh, person that he was. He supported his community and uh, he just was a loving current person he never he it wasn't nothing that he wouldn't do for his family you know myself and his sister and uh yeah he 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 will be greatly greatly missed because of his attitude and how he loved his community as well you know so um it's just a great loss and we would never see him uh, reach his full potential. You know, you, you never know what you will be if you're not given the advantages and the opportunities. And uh, Philando was denied his right to live as a black man, um, exercising his right to bear arms, you know. Uh, so yeah, we would never see him reach his full potential, but he was just a, a, a great, kind spirit. And, uh, you know, the body dies, but the spirit lives and his spirit is strong. You know, he keeps me going. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I pray a lot and I um, rely heavily on God, the spirit of Philando and the ancestors. I rely heavily on the, those guys and they give me strength. And I draw strength from people like you and the community just to see you working and uh, trying to do some positive things and bring about change. You know, you're an inspiration for me. And uh, I want you to continue being an inspiration for others, uh, especially uh, children your own age, because it is about planting seeds and, uh, you know, giving people hope that uh, keeps us motivated and keep us going strong. So yeah, that's what's, what it's all about. Yes, yeah. Um, so can you tell everyone how to donate to your foundation? Uh, you can donate to the uh, website. I have a website and there's various ways to donate on the website and uh, the website is called the Philando Castile Foundation dot org. Philando, Philando Castile Foundation dot org. We are five hundred one c three, and uh, we do a lot with the community. And uh, right now, we do have a bill into legislator right now, and uh, that's here in Minnesota. It's uh, House File seven eight four. Uh, we're trying to bring uh, change to Minnesota. We're trying to be the model for the world as far as addressing systemic racism by legislative laws and, and, and uh, budgets. And that's another conversation. <laughs> you know, uh, that's a, a difficult thing for a kid your age to really grasp, but I'm sure you can do it, you know, but yeah, uh, you can also reach out to uh, the foundation, philandocastillefoundation.org. Everybody remember that. <laughs> yes, yes, you can look it up. Yeah, we've been doing some wonderful things and uh, I hope to meet you one day, my dear. Yeah, yeah, we could, yeah, we should definitely meet each other after COVID. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for being here and sharing more personal information about um about Philando because he was a great person. He was. Thank you for watching my show, Raising Greatness. To find out more information about the Philando Castile Relief Foundation, please visit the website below. Make sure to call your Minnesota senators and show support for the Philando Castile Omnibus Bill. Make sure to like share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye.